Hello, everybody, and welcome back to OT8 Sports View. The A team has been reunited uh, <laughs> alongside my colleagues, Sean Campbell and Sam Wilson. Um, it's kind of become a regular thing for us. Uh, the Big 30 football recap. Uh, we're back with Big 30 football again. And uh, here in week three and four over the weekend, kind of a lot of the same thing that we've been used to so far in the early going. Um, our teams that have been winning kind of continue to do that and a lot of our teams that have been on the losing side um, continue to kind of lose and that's evidenced by the fact that we now have eight teams in the early going with one loss or fewer including six undefeated teams uh, a few of which we'll talk about here today and we also have 10 teams at this point who are winless and so 16 of our 22 big 30 teams uh, really having a pretty good year to start or a not so great year. Yeah. But one of those teams that's having a, a, a really good year so far is Cuba Rushford. Sean, you did this game on Friday night. This was a big one for Cuba Rushford. This was the one team in Avon that they lost to in the regular season last year. So there was certainly some uh, redemption factor there, but also a game to really kind of take control of the Livingston County Division II standings. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, a wild game. Cuba Rushford wins the game 45-42. Um, they've been a part of a lot of high-scoring games. They're a high-scoring team. They were able to, 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 to pull this one out in the end. What, what happened in that game? What stood out? And why, was, why was Cuba Rushford able to come out on top and now go to 3-0 to, to and all with a pretty you know, bright uh, rest of the season here in front of them? Well, Last year, Cuba Rushford was the Jake Jones show, I think is the way Chris Feet put it to you in the preseason. Right. This year, they were the Trevor Smith show. He had seven touchdowns, all of Cuba Rushford's touchdowns, six on the ground, one pick six. Uh, he scores one late in the fourth quarter to give Cuba Rushford the lead after Abon took its first lead since late in the first quarter. And after that, Cuba Rushford gets a stop on defense to seal the win and just really put them in the driver's seat in the division. Right, and you, you mentioned Smith. Uh, he's, you know, last year to this point, Jones w was putting up such eye-popping numbers, I think, and uh, you, you, you'd think that, okay, you know, whoever plays running back for Cuba Rushford this year could be good, but probably won't, you know, be able to kind of reproduce that kind of effort. Um, it, but here we are in the early going here. Trevor Smith is really kind of even... Uh, gone above and beyond that, as you said, um, seven touchdowns the other night. That brings him to 16 total on the year through just three games, uh, 14 on the ground, and uh, he had 327 rushing yards, I think you said, over the first two games, and then another 327 just on Friday night. Yeah. It seems like he has maybe sort of separated himself in the early going for maybe Big 30 Player of the Year status. Yeah, it was interesting, too, going into that game, Chris Fee, um, talked about just maybe wanting to see Trevor Smith at a full workload. He had only 23 carries between those first two games, but still managed to rush for 327 and eight touchdowns. The other night, he has, I believe, 20, I'm sorry, he had 29 carries the first two games. He had 23 the other night and goes for 327 right. on that alone and six touchdowns on the ground. Right. Just a combination of power and speed put on 15 pounds of muscle in the off season, moving from wide receiver to running back, and it's mm -hmm. paying off for him. Certainly, and now Cuba Rushford's in a position here where they probably have a pretty good chance to maybe go undefeated You know, this season, getting past maybe their biggest hurdle in, in Avon. Yeah, they got past that one, avenged their only regular season loss from last year. Um, in a couple of weeks, they play Letchworth Warsaw, which is also 3-0, and in Livingston County Division Two, it seems like that's probably the only real big hurdle left for them to clear. All right. Shifting over to uh, Section Six, another three and O team, another team that's gotten off to a really impressive start so far is Franklinville Ellicottville. Mm -hmm. These are the two teams that are one and two in our Big Thirty Small School poll at the moment. Franklinville has the number one spot. Cuba Rushford at number two. Uh, Franklinville Ellicottville did get their first kind of real test of the yeah. year on Friday night. They were down to Frewsburg and needed a little bit of a rate, late rally to end up winning that game 32-21. Mm -hmm. to 21. Um, Big games from the quarterback. We talked about him last week, Brock Bleacher mm -hmm. and uh, Griffin Schutte, the running back. 
Mm -hmm. um, talk about what uh, what happened in that game and, and how Franklinville Elkaville was able to get to, to three and0. Yeah, they were down 21-20 going into the fourth quarter and I don't think you know they, they entered that game certainly as a favorite being uh, being undefeated at 2 and0 going in and just the fact that they beat Frewsburg twice last year. but if you remember the first time they played last year, Frewsburg gave them kind of a similar test. Mm -hmm. So they, they they rallied around. Their their quarterback certainly has been at the center of, of all their success so far this year, although that's a very talented roster from the line to the to the ends and the receivers to the running backs. But um, Brock Bleacher ended up with 300 yards total between rushing and, and passing, uh, two touchdowns passing, one one uh, or no, two rushing, one one passing, right. uh, and then Griffin Chudy ends up with only about 63 yards, but two touchdowns of his own. And he's been, while they've gone with kind of a running back by committee approach because they have so many talented kids, he's been the biggest touchdown maker of the right. group so far. Right, certainly a, a big win for for Coach uh, Chad Bartosik's team. Yeah, still you know undefeated. I don't want to say they have a stranglehold on that division by any stretch no, because I, you I, have teams like Maple Grove and Silver Creek, yep. who I think are also undefeated at this point. And now Franklin Bellockville gets into that yep. portion of the schedule here coming up, uh, beginning with another team we want to mention real quick is Randolph. Mm -hmm. uh, Randolph gets a big uh, win, a convincing victory on Friday over Cataraugus Little Valley, 56 mm nothing. -hmm. This after a one-in-one start that was kind of yeah. a little – on Randolph like they lost their first game and then they needed overtime mm -hmm. to win the second game this one certainly more of the Randolph I yeah. think we're accustomed to um, and this is who Franklinville Elkinville gets next yep. week yeah it's been kind of progressive for Randolph and certainly a lot has to do with the strength of the schedule starting against Silver Creek which which is still 3-0 and and then uh, going to overtime with Portville which might have been a little bit of a surprise and then uh, and then just rolling through Cat Little Valley, almost the exact same score as, as Franklinville Ellicottville the week before, if you want to kind of compare those two. Right. But this is going to be where, you're, where you start to see some separation at the top of that division, if Franklinville Ellicottville can stay undefeated. Heading into, in week five, they'll have Maple Grove coming into Ellicottville, and that's a, that's a huge test. I, I think even though, even though the Titans won their division last year, they won the sectional championship, that's, that's, really, that's going to be really tough right. when they have Maple Grove, but they can't get ahead of themselves because, of, because Randolph's yeah. coming in. First. Yeah, right. yeah and, and Randolph, they've gotten it together around Sam Jacoby and Dylan Williams, five touchdowns between those two last week. Jake Beaver, who I think he, he's a small kid for, for a quarterback, but he's, he, I think he's talented. He's a good runner. He's got a really strong arm. And I, th I think that offense is starting to come together there. In right. Off. And, and certainly I think with Randolph too, just kind of the culture probably mm -hmm. has a little bit to do with it as well. This is not mm -hmm. a program that's l used to losing games. Certainly not one that's used to, you know, falling mm -hmm. below 500. Yeah. And they, they had the convincing victory to get back over 500. Franklinville, Elkinville, it, it's interesting because last year they opened with Randolph, and I think that was, uh, and they win that that yeah. game. That was kind of the surprising thing. Randolph coming yeah. off the three straight state championships, and really ever since yeah. then they've kind of been at yeah. at the top there. They're now eight and one in their last. The nine way the games. season played out, it, it it proved to not really be a surprise, or, or at least they they justified uh, that big win, and they only had one hiccup against. Portville uh, in week three, they started two last and year, one right. last year. Yes, uh, and then they they didn't lose until they got to the regional and they played Bishop Bishop Kearney. Right. Whereas Randolph was still pretty good after that uh, after that week one right. loss, but things kind of blew up at the end there. They had some some kids uh, dismissed for rules right. violation, right. and then they lost in the first round. And now getting you know in in uh, their meeting this year, Franklinville still at that point after yep. what they were able to do you know last year in the opener against the Cardinals, uh, keeping it in section six. Another one of our six undefeated teams, um, Olean High. This is a team that. Uh, I don't think we uh, a whole lot of people knew maybe exactly what to expect, just given um, some of their losses, given that uh, it, you know it's new, a new coach, a new era. 
um, with Phil Vecchio taking over for you know longtime coach Mike Kane. But here the Huskies are 3-0 uh, to start the Phil Vecchio era. Uh, they've been doing it. I think mainly, you know, on the ground we mentioned Dylan Vincent. On the ground we mentioned, um, you know, Garrett Bolt, and uh, uh, certainly a, a convincing victory last week over Fredoni Westfield Brockton. Uh, what did you see in that that game, and uh, what kind of has allowed Olean to to have the early success that they have? Well, it was a convincing win. I mean, they win 33 to six. 33-6 was the halftime score in that game as well, so they really took it over early, which I'm sure was kind of a relief to them. They won their first two games both by a touchdown, so a little bit of an easier go the other night. Um, a big night on the ground for them, too. They had 281 yards. I think that's really been the heart of their offense. Uh, Garrett Bolt can sprinkle in some big passes here and there, but, I mean, when you talk about Olean, it's Dylan Vincent on the ground, Garrett Bolt running as well. Um, I just think that they're in a good position for a playoff spot now. All right. This is their they're off to their best start since 2014, and in that year they started out four and zero before losing their final three games. They ended up not making the playoffs that year. Mm -hmm. um, the, they're now getting to that that point in the year where it's almost going to be that same thing, make or break here, because now they they get into I think some of their tougher games beginning yes. with Springville this this weekend. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, they're three and zero, but I don't think anyone would argue the fact that their toughest games are ahead of them starting this week. This is probably the toughest game on their schedule. Um, they have Springville at home, which is actually number four in this week's Western New York small school poll. Olean was actually the first team out. Of, of that poll just behind Franklinville, Ellicottville, which was number 10. Mm -hmm. But they've got that game this week, which should be very tough. Springville has a really good runner in Ian Baker, who has 13 rushing touchdowns on the year in only three games. Um, so that's going to be a really tough test for them to stop. Probably looking at being an undersized team in that game, too. Mm -hmm. This is a Springville team that beat Pioneer 40-7 to over the weekend, so that kind of gives you an idea of how tough they might be. And they have, uh, you know, both of those two teams left, and I think an East Aurora, uh, Holland team yes. remaining. So these are the games that they'll have to get some of these games uh, if they're going to make that playoff push this year, uh, which I think would be their first playoff appearance since 2011. Yeah, they've only made they've missed it the last four years, and they've only had one playoff berth in the last 11. So I mean, this would be huge for the program to get in the playoffs this year, which right. it seems like a realistic. Right. Cool. Right. The Huskies are at home on Friday night against the Springville team, so we will probably be there and, and, and back to uh, let you know how that one turns out. Final note, we'd like to touch on the Allegheny Mountain League a little bit. Uh, we know the story there, the, the disparity between the North and the South. A lot of the same last weekend. This weekend, however, is when the interdivisional matchups start, and so you'll have the South facing the South and then and the North facing each other. And we'll start to see in the South, you still have some, uh, well, they're all unbeaten except Bradford right now, but the, the three uh, big 30 teams, uh, Kane, Ridgeway, and Elk County, who are all 4-0 at this point, we'll start to see how that plays out a little bit. And in the North, um, Cowdersport was certainly the most competitive against the South, and they do have the lone, the North's lone win against the South beating Bradford. Uh, we think that they'll probably be the team to beat in the North, and now we'll see if that uh, shakes out accordingly as well. But we will be back next week to talk about uh, some of these teams, to talk about only in high and some of the other unbeatens we have to this point, six uh, to this point, and uh, we'll see what that number is when we come back next week. Thanks for watching.